it's, it's a beautiful prayer because it reminds us, and I'm looking in Father Dunny's book, uh, the passage that um, he, he, he has quoted from Isaiah's. Isaiah said, Woe is me because I have held my peace, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people that has unclean lips. And I have seen with my eyes the King, the Lord of hosts. And one of the seraphims flew to me, and in his hand was a live coal, which he had taken with the tongs off the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched thy lips, and thy iniquities shall be taken away, and thy sin shall be cleansed. So in memory of that passage from Isaiah chapter 6, the church has us pray that we might be cleansed, that our lips might be cleansed like the prophet Isaiah, that we might be purified to worthily proclaim the gospel of Christ. Now, while this is going on, while the priest is bowed over saying this prayer, the altar server is moving the book. And you might not realize, but even that has a significance. Because that change of the book shows the change from the Old Testament to the New Testament. The passing of grace from the Jews to the Gentiles. So everything is different. The gospel now is being said, but the priest doesn't go back to the right-hand side of the altar. He goes now to the other side of the altar. And you notice that the server doesn't put the book uh, facing us, he slants it so that the priest has to face to his, to his left or to the north because the altars in the Catholic Church, as I think I explained this in one of our early catechism classes, is built facing the east. The, the altars are supposed to always be built facing east. And now the book is turned to face north. And there's a reason for that, too. It's because, according to Jeremiah the prophet, I just read from Isaiah chapter 6, but Jeremiah, another great prophet, chapter 6, he speaks about how evil will break forth from the north. And so, that turning of the gospel for the priest or deacon to face north when he sings or, or, or reads it is in order to to teach us that the evil of this world that is to come forth upon us in the latter days, the remedy is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so when there's a high mass and the deacon sings the gospel, you notice that he faces north. And the priest, even at a low mass, is supposed to be facing north, even though you know it, it, the book is barely slanted, so it's almost like he's still facing east. But that's supposed to be what he's doing. And a lot of times I'll turn the book even more so, so I'm facing more north. Because I know what it means. I know it from having preached it so much when I talk about the Mass. I know why we're supposed to do that. And even that, then, is a, is a reminder to us that you who live in these days of sin and wickedness in the world, you're being told that you have to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. That you, that's the remedy. You have to have the Gospels. You have to know the Gospels. You'll notice then when the priest comes to the book and says or sings, Dominus Fabiscum, everyone stands up. And it, there's a reason for that too. It's because at his word, at the word of Jesus Christ, people were raised from the dead, were lifted out of their, their sufferings and their sicknesses, and they were raised up from their sins. And so everyone in the church stands up. And that's why you stand up. Because at the word of Christ, miracles were wrought. And so now it is the time for us to rise up from sin. Remember I told you at the epistle that Prophet Zachary said we were sitting in darkness and in the shadow of death. We were sitting in darkness and in the shadow of death and now we stand to receive the word of Christ. Whenever the gospel is preached, you should remember this is a great grace. It's a tremendous grace to have the gospels. There are many people who have never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. As our Lord said, blessed are the ears that hear what you have heard. 
for many kings have desired to hear and have not heard. I wonder how many of us ever really think about that and realize what a gift it is to be able to have now the Gospels of Jesus Christ, to have his word, his preaching. This is the word of God. The Son of God came on earth to preach to us, to give us this good news. And that's what the word gospel means. It's a, it's a word from the Greek that simply means good, the good news. And so we are supposed to be delighted to have this, the word of God with us. And so the priest says, Dominus Fabiscum, the Lord be with you. Because now with the preaching of the gospel, he's going to be with us in a more, even a closer way than he has been up to this point in the Mass. And the priest, as he, as, after he says those words, he signs the book with, his, with the sign of the cross, and then he signs his forehead, his lips, and his heart with the sign of the cross. And you're supposed to do the same. Sometimes you don't even realize that that's going on because you can't see the priest very well at a low mass doing it. But the priest is signing the gospel with his thumb, with the sign of the cross, and then his forehead, his lips, and his heart. And the reason he does that is because we're supposed to be praying that we, by signing our foreheads, that we might understand and that we might know the gospel, that we might understand it. As Father Dunny quoted St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Those words of St. Paul are telling us, you're supposed to have the same mind as Christ, to be of one mind with him. And then you sign your lips with the cross, because we are supposed to, by our words, spread the faith through our good example and through our words. The very first words that the priest says or the, the subdeacon and deacon say when they recite the breviary is, Open, O Lord, my lips, and my tongue shall announce thy praise. It's the very first things we say. Domine labia mea peres, et os mea manunciabit laudem tuam. We say that every time we begin the breviary, it's the first words we say, ask, and we sign our lips, by the way, we make the sign of the cross on our lips when we say it. So we're asking at the beginning of the breviary that our, our words might praise God, and that's what we're saying now in the gospel, that I might be able to always spread the gospel by my words, by my, the way I speak. And you should think about that too, is the words of uh, Isaiah the prophet that we just quoted and the signing of our lips. We should remember as Christians, we're not supposed to have the language of this world. We are not supposed to take part in gossip. We're not supposed to take part in evil speech. That we are called to be like Christ, to follow his example. I know it's, it's difficult, but that's what we're praying for when we say, sign our lips with the, with the uh, sign of the cross at the gospel. And then, of course, he signs his breast that we might live and love this gospel. Now, we might not only know it and preach it, but we might live it and love it ourselves. St. Alphonsus Liguori said in his, his book on the Mass, he said you should listen to the words of the Gospel as if you heard the words of Jesus instructing us himself. And you should pray for help to practice what he preaches. It's not, there's not too many people that they, they hear the Gospel, but they don't really they don't really practice it. They don't really think about it. They just, it's just words to them. It's just, oh yeah, I remember this gospel. This is the parable of the, of the, the sower who went out to sow his seed. And they don't think about what, that it, Jesus is preaching to them. And so you should, whenever you read the gospel, you should be thinking, Jesus is preaching to me. He's saying this to me. Not to somebody else in the church. And so often we apply sermons. Isn't that the truth? We so often say, oh, this would be a good sermon for my son to hear. <laughs> or this would be a good sermon for so-and-so to hear. Or this would be a good gospel for so-and-so to read. And we don't even remember that it's supposed to be for us. You're supposed to be getting something out of it. 
and you're supposed to be paying attention to it because 